Welcome to all of you. Welcome to this segment where we'll share some highlights from the Be Love virtual series that we've been hosting for the King Center for the past six months, I believe. It's been our privilege as a training team to host and facilitate a series, a three-part series on Be Love. What is love? Uh, how do we get to it? How do we activate it? How can we be it in every area of our lives? And I just want to real quick as we get started, we have an hour with you and we want to maximize that. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Elizabeth Rosner who will come in now, who's a part of our training team. Uh, Dr. Rosner, been with the King Center for two years and we're excited about the work that she's doing there as a part of uh, the team with content and as a trainer. Welcome Dr. Rosner. It is a pleasure and a delight to be here, especially on the heels of that amazing video. Let's yes. not get weary, folks. Let's not get weary. Thank you, Dr. West. I was like this. Wow. <laughs> yes. Wow. What a great segue into this because yes. Dr. King talked so much about activation in just that short nine minute video. We also have Pastor Curtis Johnson, as the young people called him in our Camp Now Leadership Academy a few weeks ago, Pastor with an A-H at the end. Pasta. Let's get Pastor Curtis unmuted so he can greet the people. Pastor Johnson is doing a lot of great work uh, in his home state of South Carolina. And he was in Miami as well recently helping um, to minister to and, and, and guide and, and provide some spiritual support to families whose uh, loved ones perished in the building collapse there in Surfside. Pastor, welcome. Hey, 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 thank you so much. Good afternoon to everybody. Good morning to some of you who are in other parts of the country. We're glad to be here and we're excited about what we're going to learn here together. And uh, yeah, just came from Miami and headed back down there next week and still got some more work to do. That's we're right. also looking forward to being a part of the Be Love series that's going to go on, going on next week as well. So we're here. Thank you so much. Uh, listen, we're trainers, but we do work out in the community and Pastor Johnson and Dr. Rosner and I, we're excited to be with you just to share some highlights, some highlights uh, from the Be Love series. And again, as Pastor Johnson just said, we have a series starting Monday that we want you to, as you listen today, pay attention to things that you say, I wanna learn more about that. And we hope that you go and register at the King Center backslash Be Love for the series that starts on Monday. We wanna get that series full with people 300 plus. We should have more than that because Be Love is a global movement for justice. So we're gonna pull our PowerPoint up and just go through some of those highlights that we have for you today. As we go to the slide, the next slide about our uh, sessions. I want you to look at the three sessions that we offer. These are the three sessions. The first one on Monday, if you join us next week, we'll be discussing redefining love. Now that's not coming up with a whole new definition of love. We just wanna to talk to you about and have you talk to us about love from a Kingian perspective. Love is not passive, but active. It works for justice and is a purveyor of true peace. This session on Monday, will focus on exploring common concepts of love in comparison to love as defined and described by Dr. King in his speeches and writings. So we'll be sharing what love is from a Dr. King perspective. What do we mean when we say be love? As you've heard this morning with the sessions that Dr. Graves and Dr. King hosted, we're not talking about that passive thing. Dr. Bernie said, King said, we're not talking about that manby pamby thing. I like it when she says manby pamby. I did too. <laughs> uh, like, wow, that's real weak, manby pamby. Uh, but we're talking about active, passionate, powerful love that implements the demands of justice. And we'll talk more about that in the series next week. And then the second session on Tuesday, if you join us next week, will be about revolutionary love. That's not a type of love, that's a sign of love. So what we're saying is we're not telling you that there's a revolutionary love and a reconciliatory love. It's the same love, but it's a love that yields revolution. This quote from Dr. King is powerful. He says, a social movement that only moves people is merely a revolt. A movement that changes both people and institutions is a revolution. Do we want a revolution? Yes, we want a love revolution. He also asserted that we need a revolution of values. So that Tuesday session 
will examine both of these quotes and Dr. King's teachings on love in order to provide insight on the revolutionary power of love. And then as Dr. Rosner prepares to come, this last session next Thursday, reconciliatory love. Again, not a type of love, but a sign of love. And this session will examine a definition of reconciliation based on co concepts from Dr. King. We call those Kingian. And in examining reconciliatory love, we'll talk about the six steps of nonviolence and the six principles of nonviolence. We want you to register. We want you to register. So Dr. Rosman will come now to share some more about our first session. Absolutely. So if we can move to the next slide. Be Love is a growing movement for justice. So it's growing. We, we're, we're seeing that grand swell, groundswell and we want you to join us. It's a movement for justice launched by the King Center, but it incorporates every single one of you. We want every single person to join in on this. It's comprised of courageous acts, constructive education and comprehensive strategy. Begin thinking about how you can implement those in your own life, both the, the courageous acts, how you can constructively look at education and educate others, and also what is the comprehensive strategy. If we're going to go to the next slide, we're going to urge y'all to look at love in another light. It's a powerful force for good, advancing justice for all. I think sometimes we kind of get in our bubbles and we think, okay, well, I've got justice, so I'm good. But we're looking at justice for all. Dr. King says, I can't be all I'm supposed to be until you're all you're supposed to be. And so what does that look like advancing justice for all? If we'll move to our next slide, we're looking at three different phases, the service initiative, the systemic influence, and sharing information. How are we sharing information with one another? What are these service initiatives looking like? How are we impacting all of our spheres of influence? And looking at all the different ways that we can impact that in these overlapping. Dr. King talks a lot about in his writings about interconnectedness. And so what you'll see is, you know, that these aren't three different forms of love um, and that everything is interconnected. And the same is, is with this as well. And so if you join us next week, then and we're going to dig into that a little bit deeper. So if we'll go to the next slide again, we're talking about cultivating spaces and coalitions. We hope that you'll join us. We want this to be a love centered coalition that reaches all over the world. And we're super excited that you're here and to share all this with you. And then if we could go to that next slide. Be Love is grounded in the potent words of Dr. Martin Luther King from his prolific book. And that's here. And I'm sure there'll be folks who can put links to the bookstore in there. This is an amazing book that was written in the late 60s that feel as, feels as if it was written in 2021. In there, Dr. King says that power without love is reckless and abusive. Power without love is reckless and abusive. Have you seen that in your life? Have you seen that recently in our systems? Love without power is sentimental and anemic. And again, it's it, it, love is not mamby pamby. I love that when Dr. Bernice talks about that. But power at its best is love implementing the demands of justice. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to my friend and Pastor Curtis. Absolutely. Thank you so much, ladies, to the doctors who are a part of our team here. Let's go to the next slide. We're going to talk about the reality that if we're going to discuss how to use love as a means of bringing about social change, it has to be an inside work first. It has to operate first within you, but it also has an external responsibility. We have to see love is not just an emotional bashing. You're going to hear more and more of us redefining this concept of love so you don't just get locked into this thinking that it's an emotional reaction. Love is a strategic reaction as well because we're recognizing the humanity of every person. Consider love as being individual as well as collective. Uh, it's how I engage me. It's how I engage others. It's my worldview, how I present and apply love, my conditioning, my words and actions, et cetera, my responses. Let's go to the next slide because we need to understand how love needs to be used as, as part of our just means and just ends. I'll explain what that means. Consider, first of all, if you see a picture of a building, if you're driving down the road and you see a finished product of of a building that's going to be built. 
you know that they have already determined what materials are needed to get to that building. So what love does is understanding that what we're aiming for is the beloved community. That's why you'll continue to hear us say beloved. The picture is the beloved community. In order to get there, just as you see in an architecture, there are materials that are used to get to a certain end. We have to consider that if we want to build a house of peace, we're going to need to use the means of peace. If we want to build a house of justice, we'll have to use the materials of justice. So what the house that we want to build is going to determine the materials that we use to get there. If you want to just ends, you're going to need a just means to get there. When you get into our, see, into our session next week, we'll unpack what all of that means. What are the materials? How do we use love? beyond emotion, but how do we use it strategically? So those are the kind of things that we're going to be discussing next week and I hope you'll join us and we're going to continue now moving forward as we discuss what redefining love is about. Thank you so much, team. Thank you, Dr. Rosner. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, let's look at why love and let's, let's think about that and talk about that for a moment. We go to the next slide. It asks a simple question. Why love? Why love? The next slide after that, I'm sorry. Why love? This, this statement, uh, the aftermath when love as we will redefine it impacts climate and translates to everyday experiences. That's what we wanna talk about. And that's, that's what we cover in this series. What happens when we create an atmosphere of love? What happens when we create an atmosphere of anything is that it impacts what happens with the people who are in that atmosphere, with the systems who are in that atmosphere. So we believe at the King Center, Dr. Bernice A. King leading us, uh, that with Be Love, we can help shift the atmosphere. And when we shift the atmosphere in our homes, in ourselves, in our workplaces, in our families, in our communities, in our schools, in our systems, in our government, in our policies, when we shift the, that atmosphere, to be under the umbrella and within the atmosphere of love, then we're shifting our behavior. So we want the atmosphere to shift and we believe that will cause our behavior to shift. And then we can be the change as Jared sang about in the video today. And we can begin to incorporate justice and love and mercy and kindness wherever we go. So why love? Because we need it now more than ever. We should be able to see and we can that we need the atmosphere to change and we need our behavior, our speaking, our language, our policies and our outcomes to change. We need love, mm. we need love. I think somebody should just tweet or post that right now. That's <laughs> just the bottom line, basic, simplistic truth. We need love. Hashtag be love day, hashtag beloved community. Dr. Rosner. Absolutely. So if we can move to um, to the quote from Dr. King, love is not emotional bosh. It is not empty sentimentalism. It is the active outpouring of one's whole being into the being of another. The active, active outpouring. This is this is not passive. It's active. Nonviolence is not passive. It's active. Love is pouring into someone, into someone. And, and it doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter if you say, well, okay, well, I love this person. So I'm going to pour into them, but I'm not going to pour into them. No, every single person on this planet is our brother and sister, right? Mrs. King says that the beloved community, we talked about that. It's a state of heart and mind. So you've got to make sure that your heart is right and that your thinking is right. We're going to move to the next slide. But to create the beloved community, again, looking at the beloved community, as Mrs. King said, is a start state of heart and mind. It's a spirit of hope and goodwill. It transcends all boundaries and all barriers. That means I don't just love on people here in Swanee, Georgia, or in Georgia, or in the United States, but all it transcends all boundaries and barriers, and it embraces all creation. All of us are interconnected and all of us are using this um, in our ways that we can we can transform all of our atmosphere and all of our spaces. But it starts with us. As Pastor Curtis said, what what we what 
is the end if, if we don't use that then the means and ends if it's not co um, coherent then we're not gonna be able to create what it is or build what it is that we want to do right and so if we want to create the beloved community what is it that needs to be there for us to create it love has to operate in tandem with justice and power so it's not that you just have this one thing well I love everybody so it's all good no we need to make sure that we're utilizing love and it's in tandem with justice and power. One of my favorite things to do is to listen to Pastor Curtis talk about the interconnected of these three. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Curtis. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Ross. And, and uh, all, all, all of us are continuing to reemphasize the necessity of understanding how love, justice, and power have each a responsibility in helping to create the beloved community. Let's go to the next slide. Dr. King said some things about power, love, and justice I think we should consider. This is a long quote, but I need us to kind of understand this together. Power, being properly understood, is the ability to achieve purpose. It is a strength required to bring about social, political, or economic changes. In this sense, power is not only desirable, but necessary in order to implement the demands of, of love and justice. One of the greatest problems of history is that the concepts of love and power are usually contrasted as polar opposites. Love is identified as a resignation of power and power with a denial of love. It was this misinterpretation that caused Nietzsche, the philosopher of the will to power, to reject the Christian concept of love. It was this same misinterpretation which induced Christian theologians to reject Nietzsche's philosophy of the will to power in the name of the Christian idea of love. Let's go to the next slide. That's important to understand because somewhere there is, there is a balance between love and power that needs to be achieved. What is needed is a realization that power without love is reckless and abusive and that love without power is sentimental and anemic. Dr. King said, this is very important, power at its best is love implementing the demands of justice. And justice at its best is love correcting everything that stands against love. What a powerful statement that is. Because when we consider this, let's go to the next slide. Let's understand again, how power, love, and justice work together. Because while we are brothers and sisters in this world, not everybody lives out the same experience. While we're all brothers and sisters in this world, not everyone experiences justice, not everyone experiences love, and not everyone has power. What we seek to do is find a way to coordinate these three items, these three virtues, in a way that becomes beneficial for all of humanity. Power is the ability to achieve purpose. Power needs love or it becomes reckless and abusive. With love, power's strategic purpose is creating the beloved community. Love needs power or it becomes sentimental and anemic. It's just an emotional feeling, but it needs power. With power, love moves beyond sentiment into sustainable outcomes. At its best, power is love implementing the demands of justice. And at its best, Justice is love, which is realigning humanity, our practices, our mores, and our policies with love, acknowledging, recognizing the humanity and dignity of every human being and committing ourselves to making sure that that love, justice, and power is a reality in everybody's life. So this is what we're seeking to do, and we'll go into even more detail to unpack all of this statement because this is a lot real quick, but we'll be unpacking it next week in the session. So hopefully you'll join us. Yes. And now, right now I'm going to put it in Dr. Love West's hands. Justice. Uh, thank you mm -hmm. for that. So we're going to take a quick break and, and watch a video about Be Love. We're going to mm -hmm. cue that video, watch that video. When we come back, we're going to learn more about what's in sessions two and three next week. Revolutionary love and reconciliatory love. So We'll see you back here in just a few minutes. 
So my brothers and my sisters, as we embrace this urgency of creating the beloved community, now is the time to be love. Love means understanding redemptive goodwill toward all which seeks nothing in return. So be love by implementing the demands of justice to eliminate the school to prison pipeline that has so many black children entrapped. Be love by correcting voting policies that seek to suppress the votes of millions of black and brown people. Be love and implement the demands of justice by transforming a society that is disproportionately violent toward black lives, including black transgendered lives and indigenous lives. Be love and correct false narratives and economic policies that continue to divide and pit poor and working class black and white people against each other. Be love and implement demands of justice where systems and structures are deconstructed and lead the way of living in community that reimagines just humane, equitable, and sustainable policies, practices, and behaviors. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them who hate you and pray for them that despitefully use you and abuse you. Be love and do justice and love mercy and walk humbly with our God. Wow. They're bringing us back in to be Dr. Bernie say King. Yes. Messages, team. Yes. Oh, getting, us, getting us fired up. Woo. Pastor Curtis, as you get started with revolutionary revolutionary love, I know you're fired up too. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am. For some reason, my my camera likes to go in and out, but I hope we can we can you can still see me over here. Good, but Let's listen. See you. Absolutely good. So what, I'm going to ask a question. What is nonviolent love-centered revolution? I want to challenge everyone that's watching and listening right now. When you hear the word revolution, what comes to mind? When you hear revolution, what comes to mind? When I hear revolutions, the first thing that comes to my mind is start. I started imagining burning buildings. I started imagining uh, these massive demonstrations all over the streets and and I've seen you know you see tear gas and you see police in uniform and you see all these things going on but what we're talking about is a revolution but we're talking about doing it through love and so the question is what is revolutionary love when we consider what a revolt is revolt is a little bit different from revolution a change in systems and structures is like a revolt, when you see some type of mutiny, you see a change of regime, etc. And then the other opposite, uh, polar opposite uh, end is a change in the hearts of people, which is great. A change in the hearts of people can be similar to a revival. I'm a preacher, so I'm going to use the word revival. But here's something that we're trying to bring is a change of heart as well as systems. When we can get a change of heart to a heart of love that recognizes everybody's humanity and dignity and combine that with a revolutionary change in systems, the change of hearts and the change of systems equals true revolution. And we're trying to bring about a revolutionary transformation, but through love. That's a powerful statement by itself, which will be unpacked next week. But I'm going to turn it over to Dr. West to continue to drive in. Mm -hmm. What is this revolutionary love? What is it? Let's go look at, at four points about uh, a revolution that is driven by love and intent on creating the beloved community. Now we go into detail about each one of these in the second session next week on Tuesday, but just wanna share some, some snippets here today and tell you that revolutionary love, again, not a type of love, but a sign of love is person oriented. Uh, Dr. Bernie Say King mentioned earlier about the need to be person oriented, not thing oriented. Revolutionary love is centered on uh, how can we care about people? Dr. King talked mm -hmm. about how, you know, uh, in our faith and our religion, we need to be concerned about how people are living down here, not just in the great by and by, I'm paraphrasing him, but he talked about the slums right here on earth in our communities. Uh, so revolutionary love would have us look at the conditions that human beings are living in, the conditions 
of our earth too, as we look at the effects of climate change, what happens to our climate affects us as people. It's in Flagstaff, Arizona right now, uh, it's flooding and there are trucks floating down the street and we can't look at that and say we're practicing love, but we don't care about that. So we have to be in our revolutionary love, person oriented. This is the second thing. The second thing is we have to be person, people and institution changing. So I am shifting. If we go back to that last slide, shifting from just talking about what love needs to be and talking about us as we be love, we should be person oriented. Mm -hmm. We should be people and institution changing. That's revolutionary. So we're more than looking at just people, but we also want to change hearts. We want to help people change their hearts. And we still believe in heart change because okay. love is transformative. It's revolutionary, it's transformative, and it transforms institutions. So love can look at every institution that we have. And as Dr. King defined justice, he said, justice at its best is love correcting everything that stands against love. And I want you to imagine us taking that revolutionary love and changing everything in institutions that stands against love. What would we see in what Dr. King called our world house? If we see our interconnectedness and we apply revolutionary love, if we were to be revolutionary love to change institutions. Thirdly, revolutionary love, that's us being love, is persistent about service and systemic work. I briefly share with you Dr. King's analogy where he talked about how uh, we don't, don't only need to be concerned about, and he's discussing a parable from scripture, we don't only need to be concerned about uh, taking care of the person who's fallen into hard times on Jericho Road, but we need to transform Jericho Road. In another place, he says, true compassion is more than flinging a coin at a beggar. Uh, true compassion, love, shifts the institutions, the edifices that created that beggar. So we're thinking about being uh, people and institution changing. And thirdly there, as we saw, is persistent about service. We wanna meet critical needs but we also want to find out why those needs exist. And then finally, revolutionary love is purpose for creating the beloved community, which is not a utopia. It's a, it's a, a society that we can achieve if we want to. If we build the will, then indeed we can eradicate poverty. We can eradicate racism and all forms of discrimination. And we can eradicate militarism, all forms of violence, where there's violence put in place to maintain injustice we can eradicate those three that Dr. King called the triple evils in order to uh, effectuate and build and create the beloved community. We can do that. We believe that, that's why we're here. And that's why we believe love, which is the foundation of nonviolence will get us there. So we are invested in being love to create the beloved community. Dr. Rosner. Ooh, thank you, Dr. West. We'll move to that next slide. Love is revolutionary. Do y'all see how um, how love is spelled backwards and revolutionary? Mm. You know, Pastor Curtis laid out for us um, one vision of a revolution. But when you think about just the root of that word, that love is in there. And it is because it creates the beloved community. We talked about the beloved community is that state of heart and mind. It's that spirit of hope and goodwill. It's transcending all the borders, all the barriers, and we're embracing everyone. It implements the demands of justice, as Pastor Curtis has already laid out for us. It's challenging and correcting ideologies, practices, and systems. It's challenging the way we think. It's challenging the way we behave. It's challenging the structures in which we're operating. How is it that you can be a person of revolutionary love? How can you impact your dining room, your classroom, your boardroom, in all these different ways to impact that? How can you say, okay, I'm going to sign up for this next week. I'm going to sign up for these classes because I want to know more. I want to understand exactly how it is that I can 
transform the atmosphere and the systems and the structures that I'm operating in. Um, many of you may have caught um, a couple of weeks ago, Dr. Bernice King had a discussion with Lady Gaga and she talked about the power of unlearning. What is it that you need to unlearn? I've done a lot of unlearning in my life in order to embrace this uh, nonviolence 365 and to look at Dr. King's philosophy and methodology of nonviolence. How is it that you can maybe revisit that conversation or begin to think about all the unlearning perhaps that you need to do? Again, we're going to challenge and correct ideologies, practices, and systems and ensure that we're sharing this love with everyone, that it's not just folks in our home. It's not just folks that we interact with every day. It's folks at the grocery store. It's folks in another country. Um, it's folks that, that say, okay, I, I am not sure I'm with you, but I can say, I see the divinity in you, that spark of divinity in you, and, and let's come alongside together. So thank you all so much for joining us for this portion of it. And now we are going to transition to another video. Love. Now, I know many of you saying, what do you mean by love? Because people have so many different understandings of love. What I am talking about is not the powerless, the weak, and the anemic love. No, no, no. I'm talking about be love and implement the demands of justice. Be love and use your power to correct everything that stands against love. The urgency of now is to dig in and create a beloved community by rising up to be love. Let's go forward in this moment and bridge the divides. Let's go forward to create the beloved community. Let's go forward and rise up to be love. Let's go forward and rise up to be loved. Let's do that. Uh, if you're on a device, if you're on your phone, if you're on your iPad, if you're at your computer, we encourage you right now to go to Twitter, to go to Instagram, Facebook, and post or tweet about this broadcast today. Share with people that you're tuning in. Share with them that you're thinking about joining us next week, and hopefully you will register for our Be Love series, which is Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, go to thekingcenter.org to register today. Use when you post and tweet, hashtag Be Love Day, hashtag Beloved Community, and you will see on Twitter um, an emoji of Dr. King with a heart, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So yeah. we're excited about this day. And as we continue to talk about this Be Love series, we now want to ask the question, what is reconciliatory love? What is reconciliatory love? When you hear the word reconciliation, what do you think about? Let's bring that question up so people can see it. What is reconciliatory love? We consider that what is nonviolent love-centered reconciliation? What is reconciliatory love? You know, sometimes when we hear the word reconciliation, I know when I used to hear it, it used to leave a bad taste in my mouth hearing it. Isn't that amazing? You can get a bad taste in your mouth from hearing something, uh, talking about it and thinking about it because it had been postured by people as being something uh, that's weak, that causes uh, people to just say, let's get along, but there's no justice. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about love, which is not only revolutionary, but it's reconciliatory love that causes people to say, let us join together. Let's decide to eradicate injustice and let's move forward in true peace, which Dr. King defined as, he said this about true peace, true peace is not merely the absence of tension, it is the presence of justice. So we're talking about reconciliatory love in our third session next week. We want you to be a part of this series, so we want you to hear a little bit more now about reconciliation and reconciliatory love from Dr. Johnson. Dr. Johnson, Pastor Johnson, I heard just that, gave Dr. you Bishop Johnson. Yeah, oh Lord, I'm Dr. Bishop everything. Everything. I'm just going to tell everybody the King Center promoted me. They have to get over it, huh? <laughs> so <laughs> um, the aftermath, let's go to the, the next slide. Oh, reconciliatory love. Listen, the aftermath of nonviolence is the creation of the beloved community. The aftermath of nonviolence is redemption. 
The aftermath of nonviolence is reconciliation. At its core, the beloved community is an engine of reconciliation. I want us to consider just for a moment uh, what we're saying when we say reconciliation. It's the goal that in the end, there is a brotherhood. There is a society through which we can work together, live together, appreciate, respect one another, and demonstrate the values of love with one another. That's the end goal. This is going back to what we said earlier about Dr. King beginning with the end in mind. He began his work, all of his work, the campaigns, the speeches, everything that he did, had the end, the goal of a beloved community where persons of all backgrounds and cultures and experiences can be together, integrating into a culture of brotherhood. That's the goal. Now let's look at what could be the alternative. If we used violence to get to this place, let's consider a violent revolution, a violent situation where, and we can see right now happening, there was just an assassination of the president in Haiti, uh, what we're seeing in Cuba. There's another, hopefully not becoming violent, revol uh, a revolt that's taking, uh, taking place down there. What you want is that in the end, there's gonna be fellowship but, and, 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 and relational love in the culture, but when you've seen such violence taking place in Haiti, it's going to be difficult to bring people back together without there being bitterness and hate and resentment and more violence. Violence begets violence. And you'll continue to see that cycle until somebody breaks it with love. Cuba, we hope that Cuba does not become a violent situation, but the people are crying out for freedom. They're crying out for justice. They're, praying, they're crying out for love. That's what they're crying out for. They're in a totalitarian situation. But what we're looking for in through the means of love is a revolution that produces reconciliation. We want in the end, the aftermath, to be love, to be redemption, to be reconciliation. This is what our strategies, the strategies that Dr. King espoused and what we're trying to teach through Be Love and through the sessions on next week. We wanna unpack how we can make love become the force of reconciliation and redemption. Uh, so having said that, I'm going to turn it now over to Dr. Elizabeth. She's going to take it even further in discussing reconciliatory love. Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Johnson. Um, yes, if we could move uh, to that next slide, reconciliatory love. Remember, we're talking about that it's not a type of love, but a sign of love. So we're not segmenting it. It's all the same love, but thinking about different ways that we can utilize this reconciliation that's driven by love. It's part of the beloved community. Again, it goes back to that definition. It's realistic. It's achievable. It's not a utopia. Are you going to have conflict in the, in the beloved community? Absolutely. But how do you resolve that conflict? All of that are things that we get into at a much deeper level, um, both next week in our um, applying and understand, understanding nonviolence classes that we're going to continue to do online, as well as lots of exciting, trainings that we have upcoming. But just as a, a tiny little snippet, remembering that reconciliation is driven by love. It's part of the beloved community. And so when we look at reconciliatory love, just as um, Dr. King's philosophy and methodology, it is principled that means it, it's based on his six principles. You can read about those in his pilgrimage that you can you can um, look into that and dig into that a little bit deeper. But making understanding that sometimes we, we see folks out there and they say, OK, well, we've done this. And so Dr. King did this. So I'm going to do this. And if you really dig down deeper into what they've done, it wasn't necessarily grounded in principles. Dr. King's philosophy and methodology, it's grounded in six principles principles and also powered by six steps. So if you kind of think about it almost like a train track or almost like um, building blocks, you can't have one without the other. So you can't utilize Dr. King's um, power and theory of nonviolence without understanding and implementing all six principles and understanding how these six steps fit together. Again, this is just a, you know, an overview and I wish that we had um, a, a time to much 
much uh, go much deeper into the principles and the steps, but joining us for future trainings, obviously you'll be able to do that. But understanding that this is not something that we just pull together and say what's good in the moment. Understanding that there's this forethought with of the beloved community in mind, that's the end, but it's principled and it's powered on steps. We do a lot of information gathering. We do a lot of educating others. Remember we talked about in the beginning that building, creating this beloved community, making sure that we're, we're um, garnering all of this support in our coalition is through courageous acts, constructive education, and our strategy, right? We have a strategy. Our strategy is based on the principles and based on the steps. And that's something that um, is super important for folks to remember. It's what sets apart Dr. King's philosophy of nonviolence from other schools of nonviolence. It's very important that you understand that it's principled and steps and empowered by the beloved community. Again, I'll go back to Mrs. King's definition. It transcends all barriers. It embraces all creation. And how beautiful is that? How beautiful is that? And so uh, I just am so grateful um, in looking at that. And also, I believe that Dr. King and Dr. West are doing a series a little bit later this afternoon on the six principles and six steps. Isn't that right, Dr. West? A segment, yes, at 525. Oh, five. oh you're even given the time. time. Okay. And one of the things we'll close out with today is 25 minutes on nonviolence to get people ready. So as we talk about the principles and steps next Thursday, you will have heard a bit about them today as well. Outstanding. Outstanding. Well, thank you, Dr. West. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Uh, great stuff today. And these are just snippets and highlights. Can you imagine what the series is like? Uh, we want to close out by asking a question, what, what does love do? I want to ask that because a, a few weeks ago, we began to ask on social or say on social, I've seen what love can do. So as we talk about reconciliatory love, revolutionary love, and we covered a bit about what we'll discuss in Monday's session, if you join us for the Be Love series next week on redefining love, that's Monday. A revolutionary love will be Tuesday. Reconciliatory love, where we go into the principles and steps of nonviolence, would be Thursday. But think about for a moment, I've seen what love can do. What have we seen? What have we witnessed? What have you heard just this morning? We want to pull up the slide on love is reconciliatory because. Love is reconciliatory because. Because it seeks the beloved community to create win-win outcomes. Win-win outcomes, we want you to remember that phrase. Remember that phrase, because there's a principle in nonviolence, principle three, and I'll give you just that principle real quick. Principle three says nonviolence seeks to defeat injustice and not the people who do the injustice or not the perpetuators of injustice. It seeks to defeat evil and not the people who are doing the evil. That's a That was a shift in mindset for me so love is reconciliatory because it seeks win-win outcomes. It doesn't seek to diminish people. It seeks to get rid of injustice. It doesn't ignore injustice. That's not what love does. When we say, I've seen what love can do. Think about how love isn't a bystander. Hmm. Love just doesn't look at something and say, we're going to let that injustice stand. Love says, let me interrupt that. That's why we're talking today about interrupting injustice. Love steps in. Love shows up for our neighbors and love is reconciliatory. Let's look at that slide again. It creates win-win outcomes. It creates win-win outcomes that do not acquiesce to injustice, meaning we don't yield to injustice. When we're walking, when we're living, when we're being loved, injustice isn't all right with us. We won't stand for it. We'll say, no, we have to get rid of that. That's unjust. So it does not acquiesce to injustice, but it determines a just, humane, and we would also add equitable and peaceful path forward. That's what love does. That's what love does. So we're going to close out today just by having a bit of an exchange, talking for a few minutes, Dr. Rosner and Pastor Curtis, about some of the things that we've experienced in this series. What have been some of the key things or the highlights for you? in this Be Love series, which we want you to register for. It starts Monday, starts Monday. Go to the kingcenter.org and register for the Be Love series. But what have been some highlights for you 
as trainers? I think for me, one of the things that has been so amazing, um, you know, the pandemic has been so difficult for so many of us in so many different ways, but that doesn't mean that it's been all bad. And one of the things that has happened is um, this ability to move things online. And so when we, when we did our Blue Love series in February, I think we had someone from every state and I want to say 40 different countries, maybe I'm wrong. On, on that number, but we had so many people from all over the world. And again, Global. Dr. Cook's philosophy is not limited to Atlanta, Georgia. I mean, it is, we are truly, you know, looking at creating the beloved community, which in, encompasses everyone. And so for me, that's been one of the most powerful things. We've been asked to um, translate this into so many different languages. We already have the Be Love Pledge that is such a powerful document and it's already translated into several different languages. Um, I teach um, some Korean students here um, in the Atlanta area and, and I encourage them to go online and they said, well, when is it going to be translated in Korean? I said, I'm going to pass that along. So that's one of the ways um, I, I think that it's impacted me. Um, the other thing is um, you all can see our t-shirts and, and you can go to the bookstore and get this merchandise. I was in an airport recently and wearing my beloved mask. <laughs> And um, I'll be honest with y'all, I was a little frustrated that day and my flight had gotten canceled, my direct flight from point A to Atlanta. And so it ended up me being on four different flights uh, to get from that point to Atlanta. And so uh, I was a little frustrated, but I got back in line. I was wearing my beloved mask. You know, you're wearing it. You need to you need to walk it. You need to live it. And this young man was in front of me. He was probably 18 or 19. And he turned around. And he said, hey, I really like your mask. And I said, thank you. And I said, where do you live? And he said, Washington. I said, Washington State or Washington, D.C.? He said, Washington State. I said, well, I'm heading to Atlanta, which is the opposite side of the country. But I invite you, when, when things open up, I invite you to come to a training. I invite you to come visit the King Center. Come see Historic Ebenezer. Come see the, the Martin Luther King birth home. And he said, thank you. I will. And every bit of that conversation, all those seeds that I planted were just from these letters that I had on my mask, be love. And so um, that's a, a recent way that it's impacted me. And uh, Pastor Curtis, I know you have a, a million stories like that as well. Well, you know, I am a pastor slash uh, nonviolence trainer slash activist in my community. So uh, over the last year or two, we've had several different incidences up in the upstate of South Carolina. Uh, where we've had to step in and, and kind of bring people together and develop strategies and, and develop approaches to address elected officials, to address the city council, mayors, um, state government, law enforcement, et cetera. And with all of that, I've been able to, I've, I've internalized these principles and internalized these steps to the point where we've now been able to bring people together that have never been together. We bring people to the same table, sit people together and let them talk and learn and, and educate one another. Uh, and when you when people know more and when people understand the perspective of each person that's involved, uh, there's a different set of dynamics that you get to operate with. So our goal is to actually establish a culture of the beloved community mm -hmm. here in the areas that we, we're living in. So it's not just about, uh, you know, protesting and tearing up people's houses and property and all of that kind of stuff. What we're trying to do is create a culture where we actually recognize and celebrate the dignity and humanity of every individual, as well as help to educate those who don't understand the plight of other people so we can actually learn how to live together and integrate together. So we made some progress. I, I'm, I'm really proud to say that over this past year, a lot of the things that we've had to step up with and organize them to address have actually bring up, brought about some transformative uh, impact in our community. So uh, be, be Loved has really helped us to do that. Uh, that so is we've seen what love can do. Absolutely. And that's some of the things that love. Love ultimately creates the beloved community. And so we want you to imagine uh, as you register now, I'm sure hundreds of you are registering right now. Uh, for this series next week. We believe this series helps put us on a path uh, to being love in a way that's transformative, that's revolutionary, that's reconciliatory. And as Pastor Johnson just said, helps us to create beloved community homes. Mm. Think about that. Sometimes when we think about dismantling and transforming, we're thinking about going to systems and to government and policies. But the first place, as we say at the King Center, that nonviolence and love starts is with each of us. So we want to create beloved communities. 
uh, internally. I want to be an atmosphere for the beloved community. Yes. So that I can bring it to my home and my family. Uh, our training, our series, Be Love, Nonviolence, has impacted how I engage my family, my nieces, my nephew, my sisters, my parents, uh, all of my family. Be love. When we concentrate, when we focus on being love, we can create beloved community schools. Absolutely. Imagine yes. beloved community schools across That's this right. nation and across the world. Yes. We can create beloved community institutions. Now, some of our institutions need to be deconstructed, uh, and we have systems that need to be deconstructed. But what we can construct is beloved community. Yes. We can create across the world with a concentrated effort globally on being love, the beloved community, starting with beloved community homes, beloved community relationships. We want to be love to create beloved community relationships. We right. need some beloved community social media. <laughs> we want to be love on social media. Yeah. Listen, these trainings on love and, and nonviolence have shifted my social media engagement. So we want to consider that too. So thank you so much for registering. We hope to see you next week. We know we will. Go to thekingcenter.org to register today. And we will see you next week in our Be Love series. Thank you, Dr. Rosner. Thank you, Pastor Johnson. Thank you. Thank you for having you. me. What a great have time a great to be with you. Amazing individuals. Day. Thank you. Absolutely.